Well, 2008 was also a very exciting year for us as it relates to transportation in San Francisco. Uh, we just initiated the most comprehensive program uh, of its kind in over literally 30 years. Think about this, the last time Muni had a comprehensive analysis that initiated a comprehensive change was in the late 1970s. The world has changed dramatically since the late 1970s. San Francisco has changed dramatically since the late 1970s. But Muni, that was designed for the late 1970s, has not changed. Here we are in 2008. As a consequence, with the controller's office, the San Francisco Metropolitan Transportation Authority initiated a multi-year effort, $3 million invested in this effort to do a technical analysis, a stakeholder analysis, and a best practice analysis of public transit in San Francisco. The objectives were quite clear. We wanted to make Muni more reliable, convenient, and attractive. And we obviously wanted to address the fiscal health of our public transit system, as well as develop a roadmap for the next five years. Now, we could have established the next 30 years, but we decided we're gonna start chunking this in more realistic short-term goals as we design for the longer term. In addition, to those objectives, we decided to prioritize specifically around the issues of reliability. We want more predictable service. Who doesn't? We wanted better customer confidence and satisfaction. We wanted an updated system, an updated route system. We wanted to redesign and adjust service levels, again, depending on need, depending on actual utilization. And we wanted to reduce travel time. So we wanted to get people to and from point A to B, which sometimes means having less stops in between. Again, all part of the priority initiatives uh, that were part of the framework of this transit effectiveness plan. Here was the framework to which we initiated a real focus. We looked at the heaviest utilized ridership routes. We called that the rapid network. We looked at the rapid network as being part of the larger core network and this service area that doesn't move every five to 10 minutes, but what we refer to as a local network that moves every 10 to 15 minutes. And we looked at these community connectors. Those are the 15 to 30 minute intervals uh, that fill the gaps of coverage between the rapid network and that local network and then we always look at these specialized services that augment uh, the other services these are for special events focused needs etc and I'll talk about a couple of those in just a moment uh, all of that was again part of a larger global effort to initiate comprehensive reform that plan is done tremendous amount of outreach has been done with community stakeholders now we actually have to implement it in 2009 will mark the controversy may I dare say around the implementation the hard work has been done arguably the harder work needs to be done but we have to have the courage to focus on change if we want this transit system to get to the next level but we haven't argued against change in the interim. As we've studied the comprehensive strategy for reforms, this transformational approach, this once of a generation approach, or at least once every 30 year approach, we've also dealt with the financial needs of the system today. One of the areas is in hiring uh, in a system that has been starved of employees. You wonder why that bus driver sometimes uh, doesn't show up, why the bus never then uh, is backfilled or put out to service if the driver doesn't show up. It's because we don't have enough op uh, operators. Well, you can see here that we have made a lot of progress in the last year in hiring up. This is aggressive hiring. In 2008, uh, we made some real progress. You see 192 new operators have been hired, actually now even above attrition, meaning you have a lot of people retiring, and we weren't even backfilling those. We were not even staying uh, where we were. Now we're actually getting ahead. 192 nets out to 37 more or 24% above that attrition level. First time in six years, six years, we've had a net gain of new transit operators. This again, is important to your lives and the lives of people that count on Muni every single day. We've also added 26 new street supervisors. Those are the folks out there that can make sure they're spacing in buses so they're not bunching up to make sure the system is moving along nicely. More maintenance folks, not a lot, but enough to, again, move in the right direction, not fall back in the wrong direction. Parking control officers, PCOs, 
We need more parking control officers to deal with double parked cars, to move folks that are blocking the box uh, in the intersections that don't allow you to move uh, uh, forward because they're trying to move in the opposite direction or a parallel direction or perpendicular direction in this case uh, and are blocking the box. We have more transit fare inspectors. All those folks out there, you see them. You paying your fare but someone in the back is not paying theirs. You're upset about that, and you're wondering what the heck the city's doing. Well, we're going to be doing a lot more with these transit fare inspectors. We've seen a 62.5% increase. We've got 20 uh, new inf inspectors. We added a lot last year. This year we're adding uh, even more, and we've got these new station agents. So we're seeing a lot more focus in hiring and training this year, which is important. We're also focusing on new technologies, and I'll spare you this slide, and I'll just jump right into some of those technologies. ITMS, Integrative Traffic Management System, referred to uh, in common vernacular as SFGO. This is about smart transit. This is about having transit uh, that is in real time dealing with traffic conditions and changing conditions so that signals are longer or shorter based on needs, that signals are preempted for muni or public transit or emergency vehicles based on needs, uh, where you can in real time uh, change pedestrian countdown signals to make them longer or shorter, where you can deal with your traffic system in a centralized area, not dissimilar to this area uh, down on Van Ness Street. We've already initiated uh, with this ITMS system, this smart system, we've initiated some core routes and core uh, uh, areas of our city. But the ultimate goal is the entire network of the city. You have this old technology, 1950s technology, those old green boxes on the street corners that get all that graffiti tagging on them that look horrible and are horrible. Well, that represents the old, it represents a system that's antiquated. This is the new modern system, a wireless system, a technological system that uses cameras and traffic conditions again in real times and makes judgments. Some automated, meaning the computer literally will make the judgment. You don't need actual people to make the judgment. So it's constantly evolving, constantly improving, and it actually builds in terms of getting smarter based upon historic uh, needs and utilization. We've done this system on Third Street Light Rail. That Third Street Light Rail uh, has also allowed us to use next bus technology, this next muni technology, so that on all of the transit shelters, you actually find the, all of them, we added 300 this last year and a half, you can see how long it's going to take to get your bus uh, to that bus shelter. And you can actually go home now and you can get it on your PDAs and your cell phones. We're going to add more technology to enhance this next bus technology and strategy. But this is not only on the third street, but that ITMS system is on that third street light rail system that is completely brand new. It connects to the AT&T Park, which also has a component of ITMS and all these new technologies that we're rolling out. We have new partnerships this year with Google. If you want to design a transit um, a day, or rather you're going to design a, 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 a route to get from point A to point B, but you don't know how to do it and you're not familiar with the 38 or the 74X or the 59 or whatever it is, yeah, you can go on now, Google, and we've got this partnership and they can actually use Google Maps and, and they collate it uh, with our own uh, transit uh, uh, lines and make for a much more efficient uh, route. I talked in the uh, other section uh, on the environment about the partnerships uh, with Cisco. Uh, this is again a new type of bus uh, that has Wi-Fi technology, that has Next Muni technology in the bus and real-time messaging in the bus is 95 percent more uh, 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 environmentally friendly in terms of NOx and CO2 uh, emissions. It's an example of uh, integrating private sector technology and know-how with public sector in a way that builds upon our reputation as being a leader. Again, examples of investments in 2008 uh, in technology. This is just more on that uh, connected bus uh, with our partners down at Cisco. One of the nice things that it has is this green gauge, which provides information on the environmental impact of your ride on that bus. Even though it's reduced by 95 percent in terms of emissions, it still has an impact uh, and uh, you're able to actually monitor that. It has a lot of fun features. It's the beginning, I hope, of uh, a taste, rather, of the change we're going to see in our public transit system moving forward. One of the other changes is TransLink. 
How many years have we been talking about one smart car, an Uber car from the entire region to go on the bridges, to go on buses, AC Transit, Caltrans, to go down uh, on any of the regional uh, systems, including BART, and use Muni on this one TransLink system. Uh, we have just done an internal pilot for our version of it. We're going to be externalizing that. I think March of next year, uh, you're going to be hearing a lot more about TransLink. We're taking some ownership of this for the entire region. Nat Ford, our director of Muni, is doing a great job at this, but this is something I look forward to talking about next year's 2009 State of the City, having adapted a lot more or adopted a lot more accomplishments on this as opposed to promotion of, uh, of, uh, of more initiatives to come. Another one that we've been working on uh, thanks to uh, the work of Assemblywoman Fiona Ma, we got some state legislation that allows us to do forward-facing cameras on buses. So not only do we add those 50 new parking control officers that could deal with people bar uh, blocking um, uh, bus, uh, buses because they're double parked, but we can actually use the buses with these cameras that actually can take a photo in real time as the bus is coming up and you're double parked. It actually takes a photo of your license plate and sends you the ticket. So you never know what bus is actually a parking control officer. Now, people love it if they're on the bus. You'll hate it because you were just getting your dry cleaning or just coming in to pick up your kids. But you need to do that if you're going to double park, which is wrong. But if you're going to do it, do it off a Muni corridor. So we're only establishing this on Muni corridors because there's no way in a dense urban environment that we can move these buses if you got people all over the streets double parked. I mean, let's go down Clement Street on any given day. Let's go down Terravel Street. Uh, let's go down other parts, Geary uh, on some days. You got all those double parked cars. How does the 38 ever make it uh, from the west side of town to downtown within its prescribed time if we're stuck just waiting for someone to jump back in the car? Well, with this system, uh, we think we'll be able to substantially enhance our ability to enforce and ultimately uh, prevent more people uh, from double parking because ultimately the goal is not to find more people, just change their behavior, make them think differently. We've had 136 citations in our pilot phase. We've gone from six cameras, we're going to go to 28 cameras or 25 cameras. We've done it on the, uh, uh, a little bit on the 59. We did it out there uh, in the mission. Uh, we want to expand this program. It's still not what it needs to be. I'm still not satisfied with it but it's a program that we're going to initiate uh, more uh, investment in the future. Speaking of investment, capital investment, uh, this year we have invested, in this last year, a lot in upgrading facilities and upgrading our transit system. Again, let's talk about that 3rd Street light rail, 5.1 mile system. Uh, it's a system uh, that uh, we are very proud of. It didn't start off that well. Uh, we had a tough time integrating the system to the rest of the system. It was performing deplorably. Is it perfect? No. But is it getting better? Yes. You can see that the system includes not just a new light rail system, again, that 5.1 miles that goes out towards uh, uh, Visitation Valley, past Schlage Lock area uh, near the Cow Palace, but also this system enhances the streetscape. There are 122 installations of public art. Uh, you'll see the new street lighting that's been done, the median strip's been done. So it's improved the conditions all up and down 3rd Street as well. So that, again, is a big part of this year, was integrating that into the larger system into next year, getting its on-time performance up to the next level. The second phase of the 3rd Street light rail system is this system that extends all the way into Chinatown. So 4th and King, we get it all the way underground, a good portion, this central subway uh, that goes down underneath Stockton uh, through the tunnel there and out and up into Chinatown. Here you'll see some schematics. Street level here, this is the world below uh, underneath. You can imagine how costly this is. We're going to try to dollar cost uh, this in a way that it's more efficient and effective. We've got some new strategies. We've gotten the numbers down uh, to a more palatable uh, uh, budget. Uh, but we are moving forward with this. A lot of good things have happened in 2008. A lot of challenges existed in 2008. But mark uh, this year as an important one to actually secure the fate and future of the Central Subway Phase 2, continuing to connect our city to itself. The southeast sector connected to the downtown core, connected into the Chinatown North Beach area. This is an important project. It's an interesting one, too, because west of the Mississippi, 
There's no other more highly utilized line that does not have a light rail system than this line that does not have a light rail system. That's why we're moving forward with this phase two uh, of the uh, Third Street light rail into the central subway. This is important to Chinatown. It's important to the entire fabric of our city. It's important, again, in connecting our transit uh, infrastructure uh, across the city. Another important thing is storing vehicles, rehabbing vehicles, maintaining vehicles. We were doing that everywhere, or at least in a number of different areas. Now we have a 180,000 square foot facility, our Muni Metro East. It is a remarkable facility. We just had our department head meeting down there. State of the art, world class uh, uh, maintenance facility. This is also going to pay huge dividends moving into the future, something that I'm very proud of. It was completed in 2008. You can see a close up of what it looks like um, and the opportunity again to connect uh, all our, our maintenance functions uh, in a section of San Francisco as, a part, as opposed to having maintenance workers here, again, maintenance workers there, a Muni uh, uh, bus here, a light rail here, et cetera. Now getting these under one roof is gonna pay great dividends on efficiency and reducing costs and increasing reliability, et cetera. Another area we focused on some of our stations, Sean Ellsburn in particular is very happy with this and has been a great champion uh, out at West Portal. You can see some of the before and after shots. This doesn't cost a lot of money, just some common sense to improve the conditions. Here's another slide where you can see uh, what it looked like before, just rocks, ugly, uh, and then you just put a few bucks in and you plant the area, you seed it, part of the environmental work we're doing, you can see what a difference it makes. Again, I thank uh, Supervisor Ellsburn for his champion, championing this and holding me accountable on this one. Uh, he's been working on that for many years. Another area we've been working for many years is our transit shelters. We're gonna get rid of all those old transit shelters. We've got these brand new ones, been talking about it a long time. We're just a few months away from initiating these world-class transit shelters. You'll see here these new shelters actually have solar in many cases on top of them and they actually have wind generation on top of them. So it connects to our environmental programs, uh, wind and solar, as well as their smart technologies. So you'll have not only the next Muni technology I just referenced, but you're going to have potential Wi-Fi technology, you're going to have other real-time messaging boards in these shelters. In addition, it will generate over $300 million of new transit advertising uh, that will go right back into the system over the next 20 years. So this is also a way of using this new contract to do the advertising, yes, we need to do it, but to do it in a way that we get brand new shelters, state-of-the-art, world-class shelters, all those old 1120 or so replaced with these 1500 new state-of-the-art shelters, and then we get the resources to put back into public transit, uh, and we get the environmental benefits, including a free bike program, which will link to these uh, shelters. So that part of, and I'll talk in a moment about the bike program as I have in the context of the environmental uh, portion of the state of the city, but I want to talk about it in terms of transportation in relationship to these transit shelters because we're going to do a free bike transit uh, uh, strategy that we also think is going to enliven people's senses and instill a great sense of pride and spirit and more use of uh, bicycling uh, for commuting and recreation uh, and just general day-to-day -day transit. Uh, and that is referenced in this context. We have these type of bikes that have been used in other cities. I discovered this I heard about this program in Lyon, France many, many years ago. I was at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, and someone gave me a video of what they were doing in Lyon, France. It was the first city to adopt this free bike program with these smart bikes. These are bikes that have GPS tracking technology. These are bikes that use a swipe card. These are similar to a car share program, but for bicyclists. And it really excited me. Of course, we had this injunction against our bike plan and we couldn't initiate it. So months became years. And since then, Paris has done the same thing. And other cities, including Washington, D.C., Chicago, um, are now talking Portland about doing a similar strategy. But we believe by this time next year, we'll have already initiated our version of it. Again, linking to these new transit shelters, these new bike sharing programs. This is exciting stuff. Uh, and we think that because of the time that we've been delayed, we'll learn from mistakes in some of those other cities. Though I'll tell you, go to Paris, you'll see it. Uh, it's been a great success. Lyon, France, they got the next generation of bikes. It's a huge success. This is something to look forward to 
uh, into the new year. Something else to look forward to is these double-decker buses. Again, taking inspiration from Europe. Uh, why not double-decker bus buses in San Francisco? It shouldn't just be London. Well, we've done a pilot. We tried some of these out in late 07, early uh, 2008. Uh, we're looking to expand some of the lines that we actually uh, do some double-decker uh, buses. Uh, cultural bus, I'm here uh, right across the street from the de Young Museum at the Academy of Sciences. Uh, we decided once this Academy of Science, which just opened, uh, uh, when it opened up, we said we want more people to come down to Golden Gate Park to enjoy the new de Young Museum, the Conservatory of Flowers, the Stribing Arboretum, the Japanese Tea Garden, to enjoy this area. Also to enjoy the Asian Art Museum and the Contemporary Jewish Museum and to enjoy uh, the MoMA. And we thought we'd connect those cultural institutions with a bus that basically is a direct bus, a 74X, that connects those cultural institutions. Uh, it has been underutilized so far. It's a pilot project. I'm a little worried about its sustainability, but we just started it. We're going to monitor it. I'd like to think this program could continue, but I think it was a good idea and worth uh, uh, attempting. Uh, but the idea is to connect not just tourists, but residents uh, with this new uh, Explore Art and Culture and History bus. Please learn about it. Call 311. Find out more about when it goes, where it goes, how much uh, it costs, and how often it goes where uh, uh, I think you should go, which is to these cultural institutions that define the best of our city that a lot of residents forget about as well. Proving Muni, besides adding double-decker buses and without adding connected buses and bus shelters and doing these cultural buses, comes down to some basic things. Uh, not just hiring operators, not just reestablishing new routes and strategies, but dealing with basic things like collisions and safety. 2008 was an unacceptable year as it relates to safety and collisions. We have got to do more and do better. Nat Ford is doing, I think, an outstanding job with Muni, but this is an area where he and I have had more conversations than candidly any other. Uh, he is doing a national search for a new uh, chief safety officer. We've got a request for proposals to do a contracted uh, effort to really implement best practices and look at our uh, strategies for safety um, in relationship to what other peer cities are doing. We have done more communication with the officers. We're working with probably the most enlightened labor uh, leadership with Irwin Lum and others at TWU Local 250A. These guys are as good as it gets. And so I say this with respect to the days where people used to take cheap shots at Muni labor. Those days are over. These guys are stepping up. They're holding their operators accountable. They, they want to champion their workers, but they're not trying to hide folks that aren't uh, doing their job and keeping us safe. They've really been great partners with this and I want to compliment them. They deserve to be complimented. Uh, please be respectful of your bus drivers. This is about the toughest job that exists outside probably being a parking control officer. I know how angry we get when we're late. I know how frustrating it is when we get a ticket, but I hope people uh, recognize it's not always the fault of that parking control officer. They're doing their job and that Muni bus driver because you may have been double parked an hour before uh, and been one of the reasons that bus came a little bit late. You never know. Uh, so again, public safety is a big part of the improvement efforts uh, that we want to invest in into the new year, an area where we've been weak in this last year, candidly. Uh, traffic safety broadly, uh, we've installed some 20 uh, new signals uh, throughout the city. We've got 26 more coming into the new year. We've got more traffic coming. Uh, that we're incorporating again pedestrian safety as well as vehicle safety throughout the city not just for public transit uh, that pedestrian safety includes more intersections with these accessible countdown signals here's an interesting stat uh, 900 out of the 1154 intersections already have the pedestrian safety countdown clocks and that's pretty good I mean think about where we were a few years ago we were nowhere now we're almost completely there. Uh, you can see we're adding a lot on Market Street into the new year. Uh, and we've got, again, just in the next month or so, 60 additional pedestrian enhancements uh, just to get us through uh, the end of 2008. The environmental work continues. Uh, public transit is, we've got the cleanest public transit in the United States of America. Let me repeat that. Muni is the most sustainable, greenest system of its type in the country. Over 50% of our vehicles are electric. No one else comes close. The largest biodiesel fleet in America, no one else comes close. Uh, we can do more though. Our goal is 100% green renewable sources of energy for 
our public transit fleet by 2020. Look how far we already are. We're almost there. We're not almost there, but we're getting very close to being there. Uh, we absolutely can do it. Uh, biodiesel, the trolley system, the hybrid electrics. We have 86 new hybrid electric buses. I highlighted those in last year's State of the City. They're all out there now. And that diesel component of the hybrids, we've converted to biodiesel. That's how you get your NOx and CO2 and greenhouse gases down 90 to 95%. Uh, great progress there. Uh, and I'm very proud of car share again. When you think of transportation, I connected this to the environmental section. 35,000 people using car share. We can do more, we can do better, we can encourage more competition on car share. For every one of these cars, we get 15 automobiles off the street. 15 automobiles off the street for every one of these new cars we, we incorporate in the new car share program. We need to get city employees to use car share. We need to reduce the number of city employee vehicles and that's something we have a real plan on, something we've made a lot of progress. Look for that in 2009 to get to a whole nother uh, level. Electric vehicles, I also talked a lot about this again in the environmental section. We want to lead America, uh, Bay Area, as the electric vehicle uh, uh, center. Uh, of this country and this state. Uh, San Francisco already has adopted more alternative fuel vehicles per capita than any other area in the nation, the Bay Area as well. It's natural for us to lead the way in terms of electrical vehicle fleets. Uh, we have all kinds of suitors to add more plugs, to add in more charging stations. We have uh, organizations uh, like Project Better Place, Shia Gassi, uh, who lives in the Bay Area, that's committed $1 billion uh, in terms of a regional investment into electric vehicles. You can see here that billion dollar investment includes doing switch stations that act like gas stations where you can replace your batteries in less time than it takes you to actually refuel your car. We are talking about 250,000 charging stations throughout the Bay Area. We're talking about incentivizing uh, plug-in hybrid technology, incentivizing electric vehicles so you get priority and preferences in parking garages, and maybe getting reductions in your sales tax, local sales tax, maybe getting a reduction in your permit fees uh, for residential parking, maybe even getting a reduction uh, in your parking um, uh, at parking garages and even uh, if you use some of our parking meters if you have electrical vehicles. So a lot of great incentives. This is all part of 2009, 2010, getting us to a level where we truly are the center of America's new technology and new innovative strategy around plug-in electric uh, vehicles. This is the game changer. This is the best foreign policy, environmental policy, and domestic innovation and new jobs policy that I can think of. Uh, and I couldn't be more excited about having I mean, finally a partner in the White House and Barack Obama that gets it. And to that uh, degree, uh, we're very proud that we have a governor that gets it. And I thank Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, for his support of this initiative as well. I talked about biodiesel. Well, again, 100% of that Muni fleet is B20. Uh, we can do now a higher grade of biodiesel. B20 is just a portion. Uh, we can do the next phase, but already we're 100% biodiesel. The bike plan, remember, we've had this injunction. I talked about this in the environmental section in greater detail than I'll talk about it now, but I want to double the number of bike lanes that are striped. We have 60 specific projects. We've got this new bike uh, uh, bike, uh, free bike program with our transit shelters. Uh, we've got all kinds of new initiatives and ideas to make bicycling more attractive, more safe, uh, and more amenable to a broader group of people. 43% increase in the number of people commuting by bicycle uh, in the last year alone without all these enhancements because of this injunction. We finally get the environmental work done in the middle part of next year. That's why it's 2010. This plan will be done. It's very exciting. And I want to thank everyone at the Bike Coalition um, you've been tough on me, but fair enough. You've held me to a higher standard, and we're making some progress. I want to thank the members of the Board of Supervisors, Supervisor Daly and Supervisor Peskin, Supervisor Amiano, and Supervisor Mercurimi for their advocacy for doing more on bicycling, Supervisor Sandoval. I get it. I hear you loudly and clearly. Supervisor uh, 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 Ellsburn is also a big champion, as well as Dufty and Michaela Aliotto, Pierre and McGoldrick. I guess I just mentioned all the board, including Supervisor Maxwell, the whole board. Uh, has been a big supporter. I think we're all in this together. We're going to do more into the uh, new year and in 2010. Something else that we may be doing more of is congestion pricing. It's not just Mayor Bloomberg in New York City that's been talking about congestion pricing. We got a million dollar grant from the federal government 
to look at congestion pricing. And what we're looking at doing is something a little bit different than Stockholm, a little bit different than London, a little bit different from Singapore. And it was really Singapore that led the world in terms of congestion pricing well before uh, Mayor Livingston advanced it in London and before it happened in Stockholm and before even Bloomberg talked about it in New York. The problem is we're not Stockholm, New York, we're not um, these mega cities. Uh, we are a small city. So for us, it may be a solution in search of a problem to have a congestion pricing strategy in our downtown core when our downtown, with respect, is about uh, the size of a small neighborhood in Midtown Manhattan or a small section in Midtown Manhattan. Midtown Manhattan is about the size of San Francisco alone. So our needs are different than the needs of these mega cities and the downtowns and mega cities uh, like London or Stockholm or Singapore. And so we need to think about it a little differently. Uh, the Board of Supervisors to the Transportation Authority is looking at this. I'm supportive in concept. I want to make sure it's done equitably, it's done right. There's another strategy called the corridor strategy, which is a gateway strategy coming into the city. So you actually mark uh, when you come in off the freeway, that's why the freeway slide here, that there is literally a congestion pricing strategy that affects you when you come into the city uh, in any of the northern areas or the southern areas. Uh, that will obviously be controversial, I get that, versus the downtown core strategy. Uh, or it can be an and as opposed to an or. Anyway, look, we're a long ways off from doing this, but if we're going to get serious about reducing our CO2 footprint as it relates to emissions, which represent 54% of the CO2 footprint of San Francisco, and that's transportation. If we're going to get serious about investing in public transit, we can use the two needs, reducing tailpipe emissions by disincentivizing cars, and the way you do that is by incentivizing public transit, by making it more effective, more efficient, more reliable. So you make it harder to drive by making it costlier, and then you use the money as it relates to the fees to fund public transit. But if you don't do the public transit portion, you're not going to have a lot of fans that are making it, uh, making uh, the contribution to public transit uh, if it doesn't get better. So again, we have a lot of work to do. You've got to make public transit better to make it work. The only way to make it work is to initiate something as a pilot. The only way to do a pilot is to make sure it's equitable and fair. Uh, that's going to be a big challenge in 2009, but a lot of progress has been made. A study is done. A lot of public outreach will continue into the new year, but it is a big part of the last year in San Francisco. As has this version of congestion pricing. It's called SF Park. We're actually going to convert about a quarter of our parking meters in San Francisco to these new smart meters, where you're actually going to have sensors in the asphalt underneath the parking space, and you're going to be able to go on your cell phone and determine parking space availability using this new technology. A quarter of these meters, again, being replaced by these smart meters, meters that can use your credit cards, debit cards, can use, the, use these other uh, debit type cards like the Translake I talked about a moment ago, and then uses a congestion pricing strategy, a demand management strategy. So, for example, during an off-peak hour, in the middle of the day, uh, not around lunch, sort of the mid-afternoon part of the day, when not many people are using off-street parking to pick up groceries or to drop people off, it's going to be very inexpensive to park. But when it's the highest demand, we're going to make it a little bit more expensive. The idea, again, is demand management, to encourage people in off-peak times to use parking so that we can actually stabilize the peaks and valleys in terms of parking demand and make it so that people have more access to parking based again on the utilization of technology and the utilization in their own mind of a strategy to actually spend less money by going in off-peak times in those non-commute times or those non-demand or high demand times to do some of their shopping or to do other chores and errands. Again, that's the broad stroke strategy quarter of them are going to be out in the next year. Uh, this is something that costs $23 million. $18 million of it comes from the federal government through this urban partnership program. Uh, we're very excited we got that money. It wasn't easy to get. Uh, something that, though, I think uh, can lead the nation. This is a model program uh, for the country, and we're going to initiate it um, in some of our neighborhoods like we initiated our pay-by-cell phone program, where you actually pay for your parking uh, on your cell phone where you actually don't have to put a quarter in or even a debit card in. Some of these new programs that we initiated in 2008, again, technology, uh, trying new things. Uh, let's get to the key points of this year in the state of the city as it relates to transportation. 220 million uh, people boarded 
public transit. That's the highest in five years, probably uh, as much to do with high gas prices in the last year than it did with quality improvements. But I'd like to think it had to do with some of the improvements we've seen as well in public transit. You see that's 13.5 million more boardings in the previous year. That incorporates a, um, a, a connection uh, between the use of the system obviously connects to the revenue of the system. So we had $25.5 million more uh, in uh, revenue uh, than we had budgeted because of that ridership, uh, which was a big deal and helped offset uh, uh, some of the cuts that we would have otherwise experienced in a down budget year and actually allowed us to augment some programs and actually enhance some programs and make some hires. Here's the one stat, though, that is not where it needs to be. Our on-time performance is basically flat. It's about 71% average. Uh, that's better than it was. You know, four years ago I was here, it was in the uh, mid to high 60s. Uh, now we've kept it above 70, but it's still unacceptably low. We've got to get to 75, 80, 85%, 85 being the stated goal. I think what we've done in the last year or two is done the infrastructure work that will get us to the next level. Prop A, and I want to thank Supervisor Peskin and others that worked hard on Prop A, uh, and uh, Nat Ford and my own office, Phil Ginsburg, my former chief of staff, that worked overtime to get Prop A on the ballot, that created a new stabilization fund for Muni, will help. But we've got to measure ourselves more uh, on this issue of on-time performance probably than any other. Safety, always first, but on-time performance uh, needs to be right there, front and center, the next highest bar in terms of uh, accountability. You'll see that on almost every other area we've made a lot of progress. Our service hours delivers have, have improved. Our operator availability has improved. You've seen our maintenance continues to improve. Customer satisfaction, it's very low, but it's improved and it continues to improve. So look, we're making progress, uh, but we've got to do a better job in the future. And one way to do a better job is to do a two-year budget. This is something that, pursuant to Prop A, we initiated, something we've been talking about for years. Uh, this allows us to smooth over 24-month period as opposed to 12-month period, the needs of the system. Uh, you can see here some of the, um, uh, the things we've been doing, uh, not just in terms of budgeting on the revenue side, and we've invested over $100 million more in this system, so that's why you should expect and demand higher performance. But we've also been looking at safe, uh, savings issues, deactivated cell phones, even looked at garbage bills and reduced the cost. We've been more business-like over there with the leadership of Nat Ford, uh, and I just want folks to know that we can continue and need to continue to do more to be more efficient as an organization and as an operation. So it's not just the top end, it's the bottom uh, line that can be impacted by some of those efficiencies. Taxis, we want to merge the taxi commission. I was proud to have created the tax commission with Proposition B when I was a supervisor. We did Prop E, which created a new baseline funding for Muni that allowed it to be accepted. That was codified with that new Prop A. How's this for confusing? Bottom line is we want to merge uh, taxis into this new Metropolitan Transportation Authority, just like we merged the Department of Parking and Traffic uh, in with Muni so that we have a super transit agency. I still think we're making a mistake by not doing something with the Transportation Authority. The, the voters rejected that idea, Prop P, overwhelmingly. We've got to do a better job with the Transportation Authority and the MTA. That's something for next year that we, I think, can work out together, and I'm committed to doing that. But in the interim, let's get uh, this merger done, and I want to thank the leadership of members of the Board of Supervisors uh, for advancing that. Final two points, 19th Avenue, I know, I know, I know. Need to improve the conditions out there for pedestrians, for cars, for everybody. Here are the things we're doing. We're upgrading signals, we're placing the old signs, installing more uh, countdown signals. Uh, we've got millions of dollars in safety improvements. Uh, there's relief on the way we even have greening initiatives coming out on 19th Avenue. Mark my word, you're going to see a lot of progress take shape in the next few years there, including reducing the uh, um, Senator Leland Yee doing a very good job helping us at the state level uh, reduce the miles um, uh, per hour uh, that's afforded on 19th Avenue. Final point, Doyle Drive. Uh, this is one of the most seismically unsafe thoroughfares in the United States of America. It got a two rating out of 100 by the Federal Highway Authority. Uh, just to put it in perspective, the bridge, the I-35 bridge that fell in Minneapolis had a 50 rating. Ours has a rating of two. This is the appendage to the Golden Gate Bridge. 
This is one of the most dangerous thoroughfares in America. It doesn't take much of an earthquake at all for this thing to collapse. We have generated uh, about $700 million in identifiable funds by working very hard with the state, uh, by working very hard with federal government and local sales tax dollars uh, to help support the one billion one uh, hundred million dollars or one billion uh, ten million dollar uh, retrofit of Doyle Drive. We just had a big breakthrough uh, with the MTC and Steve Heminger, who deserves a tremendous amount of credit for stepping up and giving us more regional dollars, and the Golden Gate Bridge District Authority. I want to thank um, Supervisor McClatchen. I want to thank uh, the leadership of uh, Supervisor Dodd and others uh, that helped get us where we needed to go. A historic vote last week uh, that uh, is going to put us in a position, uh, Mayor Borough and others, uh, to partner with the region, North Bay, uh, as well as the East Bay, the South Bay, and of course, San Francisco leading the way uh, to, with money uh, to actually retrofit this thing to get it to 35 rating and then eventually replace it completely with a world-class um, um, uh, world design and a world-class structure that actually will connect the Presidio with Chrissy Field by putting a portion underground so that we don't have that divide of that ugly uh, overpass, uh, again, seismically unsafe and ugly overpass. So that's transportation uh, in a nutshell. Uh, 2008 was a good year. 2009, I think, will be a much better year. 2010, a great year. The transit effectiveness plan, the big part, front and center, in terms of the reforms that we need to make in 2009. We're making progress in almost every key factor. On time performance, we're still not where we need to be in safety, uh, but those are areas of real commitment and resolve. Uh, I think the best is yet to come.